to this week's episode of the Big Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. As per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show, liked, commented. Uh, I think I'm pretty much caught up with uh, all of uh, all of your lovely comments. So uh, uh, if if I haven't, I'll obviously do so uh, as soon as I can. Um, obviously, uh, as per usual, um, any comments I make during this episode of the show are wholly my own and have no bearing or relevance to the company I work for. Right, okay, so uh, just before we, we dive into this week's episode of the show, there's a couple of points that um, Spirit of Yorkshire Distillery would just like me to just, just clear up, uh, because obviously I, I got them slightly wrong in last week's episode of the show. Firstly, uh, the, the new make isn't blended before being... Um, the new make from the two different stills, the, the pot still and the column still, isn't blended before it goes into cask. Each of them are, uh, uh, are matured separately and then blended together. Um, and uh, secondly, uh, as uh, I'm aware that there's no plans to do a triple distill spirit, even though they've got the three stills, I believe the um, head distiller sees the, the, the column still as more of a rectifying um, piece of kit rather than an actual still in its own right if you see what I mean. Um, so the, the new make that I got or the sample of the new make I got was actually from the column still hence why it was uh, quite estery and quite fruity um, and um, so basically what they do is that when they put together the bottling they they use obviously some of the uh, pot still about it's about sort of 70 30 60 40 pot still to column still so it shows you how much influence the column still actually has uh, when it's actually only quite a, a relatively small part of the overall um, blend um, so yeah that's that's just clearing up those couple of little points so this week um, as you know I, I have a tendency to have sort of groups of samples dotted around just waiting for the right moment to um, uh, uh, to, to, to do an episode of the show with and today was no exception so Carrying on the theme of new stuff, we have one new bottling from Mac Myra in the Moment um, series, and I thought it might be fun to basically have a look at some of the old bottlings. So, um, you know, give me a moment, and um, yeah, yeah, all right, I'm going to probably carry on doing this throughout the show. <coughs> um, and I thought it would be nice just to sort of like have a look back in time as I had a number of samples that spanned, uh, I think, from 2004. 15, 14, I think, uh, through to obviously the, the current bottling, uh, and it's I've never tasted them all together in actual fact, so this is quite a um, uh, going to be quite interesting for me as well. And um, I'm, I won't go into huge amounts of details about Mac Myra because this is probably oh, I think how many episodes of the show I've done on Mac Myra because as you know, big fan of the distillery. First encountered them, I guess, around about 2009. I think it was the uh, Predulum Three bottling. Uh, that I first tasted and thought, yeah, this is really interesting, lots of uh, potential. And then over the next few years, I kind of occasionally encountered their bottlings and, and you know, they're okay. And But, you know, it wasn't until, I think it was about 2015, when I had the, the opportunity to taste the entire range as it was as at that particular moment in time, and suddenly it just went bing, and I suddenly got it. I suddenly figured out exactly what they were, what they were trying to do, what Angela was doing. And it, ever since then, I've just been a, been a huge fan. I think Angela is a, is a master of, uh, of blending, certainly using all these different cast types, and certainly in the Moment um, bottlings, there seems to be a lot more interesting and different uh, cast types being used, certainly sort of wine casks, or, or should we say casks that have been seasoned with wine rather than actual wine casks, I believe. And... Uh, um, yeah, so there's there's certainly been that shift. Certainly over the last last ten years, away from the sort of the, the sort of standard sort of you know uh, ex bourbon, ex oloroso, Swedish oak, etc., into using these different uh, uh, different wines and um, and things. So yeah, there's been some really intriguing moment bottlings. So in a moment. Um, all right, okay, that'll be the last one. Uh, I will. Uh, uh, I'll uh, introduce the, uh, the the lineup. Right, okay. So we're going to kick off firstly with the brand new Moment bottling. This is uh, the Brooks Whiskey DLX or Deluxe, and essentially it is their 
entry level, for want of a better word, Brooks, but obviously with a bit more age. In actual fact, the spirit is aged for between 9 and 14 years, and so I think it contains some of the oldest released spirit by the distillery, I think. I'm fairly certain they've used 13, 10, 13 year old spirit in the past, but I think uh, I could be wrong, but I have a feeling that this is going to be some of their oldest spirit release. Uh, all the casks were from the uh, the Bodas mines, and uh, the the recipe, for want of a better word, was uh, uh, X uh, 200 litre bourbon cask filled with elegant spirit, which had been aged for 14 years, 128 litre X Oloroso casks filled with four year old X bourbon matured spirit, then aged for nine to 11 years, I hope you're following that. Uh, 100 litre Swedish oak, again filled with four year old ex bourbon matured spirit, and again aged for nine to 11 years. And 100 litre ex bourbon filled with smoke tail from 2010, and aged for 11 years. One of the wonderful things I love about this distillery is that the concept of the smoke tails, and uh, as I may well have mentioned uh, last week about. Um, you know, a lot of distilleries will, will if they're going to do a peated spirit, will do it at the end of the season prior to sort of like, you know, cleaning all the kit out. I love how Mac Myra just basically goes on and goes back to doing the elegant spirit and, and calls it smoke tails. I mean, that's just really cool. Uh, anyway, so bottling number two we'll be looking at uh, is one of the older bottlings. This is from 2014. This is the Moment 2004 Vintage bottled at 48.6 percent uh, I should say that this is uh, the, the Brooks is 46.6 which is their sort of current standard I suppose prior to that again you had lots of different ABVs um, and hence the, uh, the, 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 the this particular bottling the uh, moment vintage is 48.6 and again I don't know the the exact sort of recipe because back then they weren't quite so forthcoming with the recipe apart from I know it's been aged for uh, 10 years uh, in a combination of ex bourbon and ex tokai casks so should be interesting bottling number three comes from uh, 2017 uh, this is the moment maelstrom um, now yeah, I'm pro there's lots of Swedish words here so I'm probably going to get the pronunciation wrong at some stage so please no comments about that um, although that makes no difference, does it? Uh, so yeah, so this is Maelstrom, 46.4%. Um, it was made from whiskey distilled between 2004 and 2011, uh, combining 30 litre um, casks uh, of first fill bourbon, new American oak, Oloroso, Swedish oak, and hybrid casks which were uh, American oak bodies with Swedish oak ends uh, they were all uh, they, they were from the several different um, warehouses for want of a better word uh, that they have so uh, the cask came from Bo the Bodas mine from the archipelago uh, repository and I'm not going to tell you the name of where that is because I can't even pronounce it uh, and I'll make a real pig's ear of it if I did um, and from the forest repository again in um, well the village of you, you know where it is and I'm not going to pronounce it so anyway so yeah like I said so this is uh, spirits distilled between 2004 and 2011 Okay, uh, next bottling we'll be looking at is uh, again from uh, 2017. This is called the Moment Prestige, bottled at 46.1, and uh, it contains 60% spirit age, uh, age oh, distilled between 2006 and 2017, and 40% between 2004 and 2017. Uh, it's matured entirely in ex Philippinac uh, champagne cask, which I thought was really cool. Uh, I haven't seen very many whiskies that have been either aged or finished in ex champagne cask, so this is uh, quite intriguing. Uh, the cask uh, makeup is 225 litre first fill, uh, 250 litre second fill, and 250 litre third fill. So that's the uh, the prestige. Uh, next bottling we'll be looking at is this one. This was the Kors Bar. Uh, now apparently Kors Bar means cherry in Swedish, so that kind of gives you a clue to uh, uh, what they've used with it. So again, the uh, the recipe is a blend of first fill 128 litre ex Oloroso cask, which had been uh, seasoned with sweet cherry wine. 
First fill 200 litre ex bourbon, again uh, seasoned with uh, cherry wine. Uh, McMyra Reserve aged in 300 litre first fill bourbon. Uh, first fill American oak, uh, 300 litre first fill American oak, which has been seasoned with Oro Rosso. And again, hybrid, uh, the, the hybrid bourbon and uh, Swedish oak casks. So um, quite, a, quite an intriguing recipe, I think. And the final bottling we'll be looking at is called Thalliamark, um, which I think I've pronounced correctly. Uh, bottled at 46.1%. Apparently Thalliamark means the spirit of the mountains in Swedish. And this was a blend of 8 to 13 year old spirit. Uh, 128 litre first fill American oak, which previously uh, which seasoned with uh, cloudberry wine. 100 litre first fill French oak, again seasoned with cloudberry wine and filled with uh, smoketail. Uh, 200 litre second fill bourbon, which previously held Oloroso, and 200 litre second fill bourbon, which previously had uh, Pedro Zimenez. Uh, this, was, I believe, was released in 2018. So, um, yeah, I think this is going to be a really, uh, um, a really cool, really interesting tasting. So, in a moment, oh, sorry, uh, in a moment, we'll kick off with the Brooks DLX. <laughs> okay, so let's see what uh, the Brooks DLX gives us on the nose, then, shall we? Classic, classic McMyra, estuary, vanillary, got that wonderful sort of grippy tannic character, but not overly grippy, sort of certainly getting the Swedish oak. I often seem to find that Swedish oak almost sort of reminds me a little bit of French oak. It has that sort of quite grippy tannic character, um, but there's lots of mature barley, white fruit, white chocolate, citrus, uh, almond, yeah, a bit of lemon. A little bit of, a little bit of melon as well. I mean that is lovely, absolutely gorgeous. I mean it just ticks all my boxes. I mean it is, it is Brooks, but with a bit more, bit more age, a bit more complexity, a bit more depth. There's a little darker element there, um, almost kind of tobacco leaf, I guess. Um, a little bit of coffee, touch of smoke from the smoke tail, just a smidge. Um, I mean that is gorgeously complex. I mean that is just just amazing whiskey. It really is, um, and just, just an absolute joy to uh, stick your nose in the glass. Let's see what the passes. progression on that is stunning. Um, kicks off with quite a minerality and I, I don't know whether it's just kind of me, whether it's just the sort of the fact that I just seem to find that the casks they often seem to that mature in the Bodas mines tend to have this real minerality to them. I don't know whether that's just like I say a, a kind of a association or whether that isn't indeed actually true. Um, so it kicks off with this quite sort of minerally um, so slight vanilla, uh, barley, uh, carrot and matured barley. Then we start to move into the estuary, estuary fruits, touch of melon, a little bit of pineapple, um, apricot. That sort of slight grippy oak comes through right on the mid palate and then a little bit of spice on the finish, a little herbalness, a little nuttiness from the, uh, from the oak. Um, all the while that sort of fruit is kind of lingering little bit of smoke right on the aftertaste just sort of just drifts in nicely and the progression like I said is absolutely sublime that is just an absolutely gorgeous whiskey <laughs> Right, okay, so let's move on to the vintage. It's been quite a lot, number of years obviously I think I tasted this in 2015 so about six years ago was the last time I tasted this so looking forward to trying it again Intense, pungent, quite whiny, honeyed. Yes, an almost kind of herbal, almost kind of rye-like uh, herbalness coming through. Some gritty oak again, coffee, gritty tannin. So that's, for ten years old, it, it 
does have a little bit of a, a youthful edge actually. The spirit just seems to have that, I wouldn't say an edginess, but you, it doesn't feel as mature as you would expect at 10 years of age. Um, but like I said, it's got a it's got a lovely nose, a lovely blend of, of uh, relatively simple in, in, in when it comes to sort of like putting it up against the um, the Brooks because of the sort of like it seems to me that, that the cast makeup is obviously pr a lot simpler. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not as complex. I mean, it's again just really intense uh, and quite whiny, like I say, quite honeyed with that almost like say rye kind of character. Let's see what the pass are. Mm. Mentholated herbal spiciness on the finish. It kicks off again with the with the um sort of the winey dried fruits, the late harvested honeyed fruits, um, a little bit of barley, some vanilla. Not quite so grippy, I mean I can certainly feel a little uh, the tannin, rather that it's not quite so sort of um, grippy. Again minerally, really long, the sort of herbally kind of uh, spiciness really comes through on the finish. Um, really long, really impressive. Um, again, like I said, it's it's simple. It, now, when you kind of like sort of, uh, I guess, taste it against the sort of like the the sort of the current releases in the moment, it does seem a little simpler. Um, but you know, like I said, the complexity is there. The the the, the fruit, the character of the, um, uh, the the distillery character, the the cast character, it's certainly all there. And it's still, I think, you know, a really quite impressive whiskey. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Maelstrom. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? That's an intense nose. That's quite oaky. I mean, it's not a surprise given that you've got sort of American oak, new oak, Swedish oak. Um, it's... But the, the tannins are not quite so grippy. They're a little bit subtler, a little bit more vanilla. Maybe touch resiny in actual fact. Um, again, quite minerally. Um, slightly perfumed possibly. Apricot. Pineapple. A little bit of smoke, a little bit of pepper. Possibly, um, possibly some smoke tails has been used in this. Because I'm just pick up just that little bit of, uh, of smoke. Um, it's quite herbal now, in actual fact. I'm starting to get a sort of a, an almost nettle-y kind of character. Um, and just a subtle, subtle dried fruit uh, from the, um, the Oloroso. But again, really complex, great blending of different oak types. And again, this is less about the sort of the intrinsic character of the spirit and a little bit more about the the, uh, the oak but again just really sublimely balanced Let's see what the power's on earthy, tight, a little bit more Oloroso character, a little bit more dried fruit. Um, yeah, that's got a, a real tightness to it, but a, a lovely toasty finish. Again, not quite so much of the of the spirit character. We are sort of more in the sort of like the, the oak. Um, but that, that, that spirit does have a slight sort of darker sort of almost kind of armagnac -y kind of character it's, it's got that sort of element of maturity lovely spiciness good length um yeah that that's 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 impressive i think this was one of the, one of the first um one of the earliest sort of bottlings of in the moment range that that i really went oh 
you know that's really intriguing and it is I mean it's an ex it's a bit like sort of you know um, not quite in the uh, sort of like the lakes for example you know as we were as, as you know the sort of the, the Davil at uh, the lakes loves all these different oaks and oak character and you, you, know, you don't get any spirit character whatsoever it's all about the oak this is I suppose in a similar kind of way it's an experiment but you do get a little bit more balance you do get some, some of the distillery character coming through and and the all these different oak types you know just just work really well together so again you know another lovely bottle right okay so let's move on to the prestige so uh, wholly uh, matured in um, ex champagne casts let's see what those give us really interesting really different I mean this it just stands out as such a different nose uh, to the previous bottlings it's it's got that kind of yeasty champagne-y kind of character the oak is quite again quite taut quite tight a little bit of baked fruit pear apple ginger yep a little bit of ginger it's it's quite Restrained and quite understated, I guess would be the uh, the word I would use. But it's just got this just wonderful depth to it, and it is just so so different, so unique. Um, there's a, again, there's a nod to the um, slightly estuary uh, MacMyra spirit. It's certainly got a, a like I said, apricot, a little bit of pear, apple, a little bit of baked fruit. And we're not so it's not a sort of as uh, overly um, oaked as the the the, the Malston, for example, because obviously we are in a simpler oak character. Um, but even so, I mean, it is just so unusual. As far as I'm aware, there are still bottles of this floating around, um, so it is still available. Um, and I think if you want to sort of see MacMyra in a completely different light, then this is certainly a bottling to go for. So it passes on. A little bit fresher on the palate, a little bit more distillery character, a little bit more estuary fruit. Still has that sort of yeasty, champagne-y kind of character. White fruits again, earth, spice, touch of ginger. Mm, that's got such a wonderful mouthfeel. A lovely sort of soft, spicy finish is kind of nestling in the um, corners of my mouth. Um, really long, lots of, of, of baked fruit. Like I said, having that lovely yeasty kind of champagne-y character. Uh, it is just just such a unique whiskey. I mean, I can't think. I mean, the only other whiskey that I think I've tasted of recent that was uh, has some champagne casks in is the um, Ardner Merkin Paul the Noise Spotling. But prior to that, this is the only one that I'd ever come across that had uh, uh, been aged in champagne casks. There's probably a few others, but like I said, this was the only one that I've ever come across, and just just completely different. I mean, it's just stunning, absolutely stunning. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's move on to the cause bar. Now, um, when you think about sort of casks uh, or, or whiskies, shall we say, that have been either finished in ex wine casks or use ex wine casks or ex wine seasoned casks, as the case may be, in their blend, you always worry about the balance. And But I've never had that issue with, with Angela. Like I said, she is a complete master at the art of blending all these different cast types together um so you know whenever mac Myra release you know these kind of uh bottlings never have an issue with it anyway let's see what the nose gives us oh it's a big nose that's big and fruity cherry oloroso touch of spice a little bit of, of perfumed white fruit almond Again, there's that slight herbally kind of rye character um, coming through. Good, good amount of oak, good spiciness, tight, tight spicy uh, fruit, and oak. 
again I'm getting the sort of like the Swedish oak uh, coming through quite loudly I mean or should we say it seems to me that the Swedish oak is uh, is quite noticeable um, touch of prune earth a little bit of walnut shell again like I said you've got that sort of lovely sort of balance of of, uh, of cherry and oloroso and American oak and Swedish oak it really is a complex nose although like I said the oloroso is possibly a little bit more forward a little bit more sort of you know I wouldn't quite say in your face because none of the McMara bottlings are ever you would ever say in your face they have just this restrained elegance to them um, a little bit of sappiness as well possibly um, mm. I mean that's a complex nose that's really impressive um, no doubt about that mm. so we'll pass on Kicks off with the sweet cherry and the oloroso, a little bit of bitter oak tannins, um, slightly chocolatey. Oh, those tannins are just wonderfully chocolatey. They're absolutely gorgeous. Soft, slightly dusty. Um, spices come through on the middle. It's a little bit more heavier on the oloroso cherry. Uh, and I'm not quite getting so much distillery character. There is an inkling of it, an inkling of fruitiness and, and a little bit of, um, and certainly if you wait a moment, <laughs> oh, sorry, um, you do get the feeling of, of, of the fruitiness of the spirit. Um, but the kind of the cherry comes back as a little bit of tar, more dried fruit. Um, there's a little bit of a sort of a titanic character, but... The, the, the cherry kind of seems to sort of be the kind of, uh, what's, what's the word, sort of substrata of this, you know, it's the, the cherry that runs right the way through this from beginning to end and the other sort of flavours kind of like sort of move around it. Um, it's incredibly long, it's balanced, it is just, it's gorgeous. Right, okay, and finally we're on to the failure mark, so um, cloudberry wine season car, so, so I can't say I've ever tasted cloudberry wine, um, but anyway, let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Dense, rich, malty, and surprisingly quite a lot of distillery character in actual fact, when you think about all the different different cask types uh, that are being used here and the amount of casks that have been seasoned with uh, cloudberry wine I'm certainly getting apricot, estuary, pineapple, apple a little bit of treacle, a little bit of tar, a little bit of smoke touch of spice, plenty of berry fruit but again it's not sort of overwhelming um, and those sort of berries have a an edge to them, it's a little bit of a bitterness possibly um, sort of reminds me a little bit of how slows can, can be in, in slow gin they can often have that just slight sort of twang of bitterness um, quite smoky now, a lot of spice dense like I said, quite herbal, quite malty, quite rich hmm, that again different, completely different to all of the other bottlings, really, really interesting. So the pass on. Chewy, dense, malty, kicks off with the sherry, so I'm getting sort of treacle, walnut, slightly sort of um, winey kind of PXE sort of fruit. Um, but then it really freshens on the mid palate. It comes through with some citrus, uh, some minerality, uh, which then allows the sort of the berry fruit, the estuary, 
distillery character to come through um, then sort of returns to sort of like some that's, like I said that slightly sort of berry fruit with a little bit of an, a bitter edge um, and again a little bit of walnut shell a little bit of dried fruit a little bit of spice a touch of smoke I mean again just the the, the the progression on that is just absolutely sensational it's stunning it's balanced um, like I said the palette is a little bit more heavier initially on the sherry but certainly uh, on the mid palette you know the uh, the sort of the cloudberry wine the distillery character comes through the cloudberry wine kind of lingers a little bit more and kind of outlasts the distillery character but even so I mean that is just a stunning whiskey different uh, different balanced intriguing Ooh, I'm having a moment okay so let's sum today's episode of the show up um, firstly a big big thank you to the distillery for all the samples for today's episode of the show bar the um, uh, the vintage which I think was uh, uh, a leftover sample for when I was uh, tasting for the um, uh, the whiskey magazine anyway so uh, the Brooks DXL uh, or DLX I should say um, stunning absolutely stunning love that whiskey uh, I mean I guess as you well know I am a purist at heart and you know um, shove your spirit in sort of ex-American oak um, I mean I know there's more going on in that but like I said it has more of the sort of right the, the the distillery character and more of the American oak yes there's a little bit of sort of a note from um, the, uh, the 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 Oloroso and you certainly get the grippiness of the um, that the Swedish oak tan is but just all in all I mean that is just absolutely stunning and if you love you know Mac Myra um, then that is kind of like right up your street as they say um, the, the vintage yeah I mean okay it was um, simpler in a roundabout kind of way and that's only because the, the, the recipes for the moment bottlings have become more complex uh, and there's a lot more going on but what it delivered was was absolutely gorgeous you got the, the, the Tokai cast, you've got the American oak, you've got the distillery character, uh, and although it may be in this kind of lineup uh, is slightly overshadowed, it's certainly still a very, very good bottling. Uh, the Maelstrom, um, again, you know, it, it, it just sort of like had a real minerality to it, and it just kind of like, um, the, 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 like I said, it just sort of Although the, the, the cast came from the, the, the various different locations, the, the the spirit that seems to be aged in the Bodas mines just has this minerality to it. Or you know whether it's like I said, whether it's my kind of like association or whether that minerality really is there, uh, it's always difficult to say. That is, as we know, um, maturing whiskey is not exactly an exact science. But again lovely balance of, of, of the different cast types, elegant, you know, I really, really like that particular bottling. Um, moving on to the uh, the Prestige, just completely different. I mean, it just showed sort of like the distillery in a completely different light. It's unlike any whiskey that I've ever tasted, really, like I said, apart from maybe the, the Paul Lenoise bottling. Uh, it has that sort of yeasty, sort of champagne-y kind of character, but again, it's all balanced, and when you think it's wholly aged in ex champagne cast getting that balance right is just you know amazing really at the at the end of the day so again you know superb bottling at uh, the cause bar um like i said you know uh whenever you start messing around with sort of you know uh ex wine season casks and all that kind of stuff you know you do run the risk of this of of the the wine becoming sort of omnipresent and sort of overwhelming but certainly like I said you know uh, I think sort of Angela uh, uh, blend you know it's such a master of the art of, of blending her whiskies and so that they all are certainly balanced and not one-dimensional and certainly this was was the case yes all right there was there was quite a bit of cherry character there was quite a bit of um, uh, Oloroso character but it wasn't the overwhelming theme of, of, the, of the spirit uh, or of the whiskey I should say and this 
this is it, you know, I don't dislike Oloroso and I don't dislike Sherry Cast, but it's all about the balance to me at the end of the day. I go on and on and on about that, but it's sort of like, you know, I don't want a one-dimensional whiskey. I don't want to just taste all oak or all whatever, you know. I want, I want some complexity. Um, and certainly sort of, you know, that just had it in, in, in buckets. Um, and that the value mark, again, similar kind of comments, I suppose, to the, um, the cause bar. Balance, maybe a little bit more heavier on, on the, uh, the, the, the wine cask, deeper, richer, maltier, but still just, just so well balanced. And, you know, it's just, you know, just a lovely whiskey all around, as they all are. And it's sort of very rare that sort of, you know, I can do an, an entire episode of this show and wax lyrical about every particular bottling because, you know, whiskey does have hits and misses shall we say at the end of the day and but you know i i think sort of mac Myra certainly uh, in the here and now is just hit after hit personally and uh, you know i've got got no problem with uh, recommending uh, you guys if you if their their whiskies are available in in your locale go and buy them you know uh, even just go and buy the, the, the svensek or or the brooks you know the standard sort of bottlings you know because they deliver sort of like an absolutely gorgeous whiskey uh you know the, the the moment range are the top of the tree they are more expensive you are looking at three figures um but you know they're not inordinately expensive i still think the range is you know really well priced um and certainly yep yeah, i would uh, i would suggest going for them um, anyway, that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I've certainly found it really interesting. Um, and uh, like I said, you know, it's uh, long may uh, Angela and uh, the um, McMurray Distillery uh, release great whiskies. And I'll be a happy bunny for the moment. Good ramming and good afternoon. <laughs>